it's tea with tea quilts and i'm here today to do part two of my crazy quilt i have already done some steps and i thought that i would just show you how i was going to finish this quilt off <music> I used my two and a half inch drip die and I cut some two and a half inch strips. I also cut enough strips that I will have enough to do my binding with this same border that I just added. So I am going to put these aside and I have already connected these strips, cut them to size and I have sewn them to my sides first, my left and right sides and then my top and bottom. And my quilt top, I have it set six by seven. My blocks are 10 inch finished. So for my side borders, I, my strips are two and one half by 70 and a half. And then for my top and bottom borders, my strips are two and one half by 64 and one half. So I had to add the width of my border to my top and bottom. So I'll put those measurements on the screen as well for you. Then the next step was deciding what border that I want to finish this off with. And so I have gone back into my AccuQuilt supplies. I think sometimes we have difficult time making scrappy borders. So I am actually using my chisel die to make my scrappy border. And you can see where I've already have it outlined. I have been using AccuQuilt products for a long time. So I do not have all the dies where they are two-toned. So this chisel die is number 55039. And I will leave a link down in the description box for you. And each chisel finishes at 3 by 6 And I will talk about that when I get to the pieces. But do note that since I'm cutting on my AccuQuilt Studio system, I don't have a Go cutting system, that I do have to use the Go adapter plate. And whenever you're cutting on a studio, you do not use the Go cutting pad. You actually use the Studio cutting pad. So this is what I actually use to cut my pieces. So in part one of this series, and I will link it up at the top, I had cut 13 inch squares from fat quarters and so I had strip sets left and I had them in the widths like this but they were longer because I've already cut my pieces out but I decided I didn't want to have a whole lot of scraps going into my scrap storage so I wanted to go ahead and make a scrappy border so I decided to cut out a lot of chisels so from each I had used I used 30 fat quarters when I made this quilt top, so I have 30 different fabrics, and I needed 64 pieces, so I had to use two of the fabrics twice. So I ended up cutting out 64 chisels here. I'm going to use eight of them per side. So once I cut those chisels out, I just went ahead and started sewing them into pairs and I just pressed the seam to one side. It really doesn't matter because none of the seams are going to match. So you're with me now where I am actually going to my next step and that's going to be sorting these into four different sets for the border so that I'm kind of moving my fabrics around the quilt. Because when I put them together, you can see where this piece is the same as this piece. And if you want to sew where you're making this unit, that's off, that's perfectly fine. But since my quilt is a crazy quilt, I'm going to opt to make it as scrappy as possible. So what I'm going to do is just take my pile and just separate into four. So now I have each one of these separated out into fours and now I am just going to select two of them to use for my sides and then 
I am going to now start piecing these together. So I will just work with one side for right now. So basically I am just going to be connecting these in long pairs like such. No big deal about it. So there are some other things that I'm going to have to do here because my quilt top measures 64 by 74 and a half inches. So they do have the half inches. I'm giving you finished sizes. So on the sides, I need to have a 74 and a half inch piece when I get ready to put these together. So if I measure this unit out, it is actually nine inches finished. So if I do nine times eight, that is 72. So I do have two inches that I'm going to be short. So what I'm going to do is figure out how I'm going to lay these out. And then let's just say that I've laid out all of my pieces here. And that's all that you can see in the camera. So I'm just going to temporarily move these aside. And say this is my center. I'm two inches short. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece one and a half by three and a half and another piece one and a half by three and a half. And that's going to be my connecting piece and it's going to elongate that so that you don't even know that I inserted this piece here. I'm going to make sure that I use matching fabrics. Now one of two of my fabrics I used twice because I needed to cut 64 pieces. So I don't have two pieces of fabric in my stash. So I need to make sure that whatever is in my center that I have those fabrics in order to cut that one and a half by three and a half off. So let me go ahead, lay this out. I'm going to go ahead and sew some of this together and then I'm going to leave my center section open so I can more explain to you what it is that I'm doing. I am back and my camera is as far out as it can be, but I have my eight chisel blocks that I've sewn together that I showed you earlier. I laid them out into a pattern and this is the first one in my row, in my border, and this is the last one in my border. So this end here and that end right there are going to match up in the middle when I sew this into a long row. And I can't show you the whole thing, so I wanted to show you from where I was starting from. So I wanted to make sure that I had both of these fabrics because remember I used two of them where I don't have any more of that fabric left. So I had to make sure that I had two pieces in the middle that I had more fabric of. So I went and found those two pieces from my scraps that were left over. From these two pieces, in order to make this border fit, I needed to cut them one and a half by three and a half. So those are the two pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew these two pieces together with the quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to actually put these in the middle here so that you can't really tell that I had to insert the fabric in order to make this border fit. Now, if you're one of those people that you don't care if it shows where you had to insert fabric, you could have just added one piece that was two and a half by three and a half from a different fabric. You can also switch your two center pieces around and let them look like that. But I am going to opt for the it fit perfectly look <laughs> because no one will notice when you have the border on the quilt that this area is a little bit longer than say the area between these two. It's not going to be quite as obvious. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this together and I will come back and show it to you sewn together. I'm back with my sewn border strip and I just wanted to show you where this intersection here is where I have added those one and a half inch pieces that finish one inch uh, by three and a half. And I'll show it to you on the underside so you can see that the seams are indeed there. Seam one, two, and three. So when you put them together, it doesn't look like it's any different than the other pieces. So while I was doing 
finishing off this border I went ahead and finished off my other left side border and my connecting area is right here where the white is and this red floral so I just wanted to show you that I do have my other side border completed I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the left and right side of my quilt top and I'll come back so we can work on the top border I'm back with my quilt top and I'm showing you where I have added both of my borders on my side so this border has been added all the way around the quilt top and now I am working on the second border so you can see here where my pieces connect maybe you can't maybe you can but you've got the same line here showing you that this is the middle of my quilt top so I have also done that to the other side as well so let me just fold this in so you can see it so it's also completed over here and this is my center where my seams are where I've added those pieces in to make the quilt top longer now remember we did our math and we did that these well this block here actually finishes at nine inches and so we added eight so nine times eight was 72 inches so this border was 74 inches therefore that's why I had to add the two one inch pieces in for the top of the quilt the top and bottom my quilt tops measure 70 and a half inches so just say 70 inches finished that means if I'm connecting eight of these units that I am going to end up with two inches more than what I need so I have these eight units here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these out and then I am going to take off two inches and I can do that in a number of ways I can just pick my two in the center and I can cut off one inch but I think one inch off will be a lot for the regular size I would be missing say that much and it would be a whole lot so if I was cutting off an inch let's just say I'm taking off that inch it looks a lot shorter here than it does here so what I'm going to do is just pick some random units instead of doing two units I'm going to do four units where I am going to take off a half of an inch and it doesn't matter where they fall because I think the half inch won't matter as much again you could make them so that they fall in the middle but like this one here I already have some selvage sewing from when I cut this out so maybe this is a good contender for cutting off a half of an inch when I cut that half of an inch off that selvage is completely gone so that's one whoops let me cut that again didn't press hard enough so this is one unit and I can rotate it around and cut another half inch off as well I need a new blade <laughs> either that or I got a dip here so that's one unit that I have trimmed down a half inch off of each side so maybe I'll just pick another unit and do the same thing and just trim off a half inch on each side and then I will have my two inches trimmed out and I can go ahead and sew my pieces together just like I did for my side borders so now these two pieces here have been trimmed so I may want to put these in the middle and work my way outward from that and so now that I have laid out all of my eight pieces, although you can't see them all, I can go ahead and now sew these into 
a border. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for both my top and bottom borders, add them to the quilt, and then I will come back with my completed quilt top. Thank you. 